We're back at Redburn Arena in Normal, Illinois. Hello, everyone. I'm Ann Penstone, along with Bonnie Beach, the coach of the New Trier Trevians. And as usual, we've been treated to a great weekend of volleyball, Bonnie. It's been very exciting. It's been a tournament of big serves and big players, and it has just been one hot thing after another. The two teams in the A Championship match, Huntley and Princeton, have had great roads to get here, and often very difficult ones. Yes, they have. Not only have they had tough battles once they got here, but both teams upset some very, very highly ranked teams to get here. You notice Princeton beat Colchester in the quarterfinals, 15-9, 15-3, and Huntley beat Mendota 10-15, 15-1, and 15-10. But as you mentioned before, it was a lot more difficult even here for them along the way to get here. Yes, it was. We were looking in at the final rankings at the end of the regular season to see kind of how the press felt everybody should work out here and how it's written down on paper isn't exactly how it comes out. For instance, Princeton upset Mater Day, who was ranked ahead of them in a very exciting match, and Huntley upset um, Immaculate Conception, and they also beat number one uh, single-A ranked Wheaton St. Francis, and I think a lot of people thought Wheaton St. Francis would be down here. They've got a lot of tough players. A couple of we want to mention for Huntley, a young lady named Heather Call. Heather has been a very exciting player, and I think we, we were kind of feeling as we looked at the players and looked at the tournament that there's a real sense of history down here, and, and Heather's coach told us that when she was in the seventh grade, her father kind of felt that she would be on a championship team, and as a matter of fact, he's one of the assistant coaches on the Huntley team. Well, another young lady with a family tradition here is Nicole Coates. She's from Princeton, and her mom was an official 17 years ago when she was just a babe in arms. I think that's very exciting when you get to have a long enough history that you begin to see connections, and people who have invested and given time and excitement and thrills into the sport, and you now see their families coming back, and B. Coates, who is an official here, has a daughter, Nicole, who is very, very exciting, and she's one of the leaders on this Princeton team. Well, the tournament's as old as these seniors are. And we're going to tell you all about them with the starting lineups right after this. Now let's go to PA announcer Julie Baltz for tonight's introduction. And now meet the players who will compete in this session's Class A championship match. For the visiting Redskins of Huntley, who enter the match with a record of 38 wins, two losses, and one tie, please meet Coach Jim Tishy. Coach Tishy has a career record of 153 wins, 10 losses, and one tie for a career of five years. The non-starting players for the Redskins, number one, Becky Chappell. Number two, Brandy Fox. Number three, Jill Peavy. Number four, Pam Dernberger. Number five, Penny Pitsky. Number seven, Sarah Mercer. Number eight, Kara Shamhart. And number 13, Liz McLaughlin. The starting lineup for Huntley. In right back, a 5'6 senior, number 10, and Marianne Miller. In right front, a 5'9 senior, number 12, Jamie Reed. In center front, a 5'10 junior, number 15, Tanya Terry. In left front, a 5'7 senior, captain for the Redskins, number 11, Heather Call. In left back, a 5'9 sophomore, number 9, Julie Ravagni. And in center back, a 5'10 senior, number 14, Julie Otley. the Tigresses of Princeton, who under the match with a record of 35 wins, two losses, and one tie, please meet Coach Rita Plasek. 
Coach Classic has a career record of 303 wins, 93 losses, and seven ties for a career of 17 years. The non-studying players for the Tigresses are number one, Kim Norell. Number two, Marnie Swanson. Number four, Stephanie Wint. Number five, Marla Hood. Number six, Anne Gillespie. Number seven, Tanya Gouin. Number 10, Sasha Esme. Number 12, Michelle Goodwin. And number 14, Jennifer Segerstrom. The starting lineup for Princeton, in right back, a 5'7'' senior, number 16, Tina Forth. In right front, a 5'7'' senior, number 15, Rachel Longman. In center front, a 5'5'' junior, number 11, Shannon Sapp. In left front, a 5'7'' senior, number three, Nicole Coates. In left back, a 5'5'' senior, number nine, Carrie Sleuth. And in center back, a 5'10'' senior, number eight, Karen Flaherty. Bonnie and I will be back with all the action right after this. Princeton, the Tigers is to serve first, and Coach Rita Polisic told us, keep it simple and do it well. And she also said that they played real hard. Tonight's officials, Von Seal Carlson on the left and Beth Wambacher on the right. We'll tell you a little more about Beth later on. Back to serve for the Tigresses, Tina Forth. We're underway. First hit attempt by Heather Call, and it's point Princeton. So they draw first quad. Going outside again to call. At that time, there we go. Making her presence known right away, Bonnie. Yes, she is. I imagine it's going to take both teams a little bit of time to settle in, but you watch Carl come back on her second time on the replay here, and she is in beautifully and puts the ball down for a kill. Here's your first look at Nicole Coates going left-handed. Call again into the middle. Coates off the block, diving attempt, not enough, side out. You'll notice that Coates hit that one from behind the 10-foot line, and I think that's one of the things we've noticed is that the, the hitters are extremely versatile. They'll take the ball from wherever they get it. Rachel Longman, the 5'7'' senior on the serve. Up 1-0. Into the middle. Tanya Terry puts it down for a side out. It's a real advantage to have somebody Tanya's size, 5'10", hitting out of the middle. They've got a good control factor there. Jamie Grieve, who's had a great serving tournament. Going over on the second hit. In the middle this time to Coates. Good body control in the middle by Nicole Coates. You know, one of the things that we want to mention about Nicole Coates is that she's not that tall but she has a vertical jump. She's 5'7", but her vertical jump is 30 to 31 inches. Shannon Sapp on the serve. Tip, but not able to be brought up. And we have another side out. So we've got a little jockeying going back. As you mentioned, feeling each other out is Coach James Tishy of Huntley signals for the substitution. And that into the game will come Sarah Mercer, who he says has played an integral role in the back row for them. The big plays and the big games, he says. Yes, she has, and he said they have a very well-balanced team, and, and you certainly don't want to take anything away from a player who just plays back row or only plays front row. Whoa! 
you you just you can't say enough about Nicole Coke. She is amazing. If you watch her on the replay, watch how high she jumps. She is huge over the net, and it negates her 5-7. Went back to serve a little bit short on that one. And you could really get a good shot of how she went around that block, too. And your hang time helps. Well, that, not only that, but she jumps so high that she can hit over almost any kind of a block they can throw. Heather Caller, big hitter in the back row now. Proves she's valuable everywhere as they finally get on the board. We're all tied up at one. Serve received, so important. Line person Scott makes a good call, calls it in. Second point. And we might mention that this is the third year that the linesmen have come back to the tournament, and it's got to take a lot of pressure off the officials up and down. It takes a tremendous amount. You can't possibly see everything that happens with the caliber of play that we have these days. Goes to the open area, finds it side out. Nice play by Tina Ford. And a couple of things we might mention in this tournament that we've seen, or we're going to see again tonight as the girls play, and that is number one, really hard, smart serving. That's something that has not been a huge factor in this tournament for a while. We've talked about things like serve receive defense, the big hitters, etc., but we've had some real smart serving. And you see, the defense on Princeton is a little bit tight. They're not moving quite as fluidly as they might. Julia Wagner on the serve for Huntley. A little trouble on the pass. Oh, Princeton gets a break. The net's a friend. Three balls. You want to convert these. Goes short to Flaherty, and it works. Hitting position that Flaherty gets on this was just really tremendous here in the replay. She's coming in about 150 miles an hour on that ball. She's back to serve. Side that hit by Jamie Grieve on the outside hit. Side out again. So we're really seeing two good teams go right at each other. Back into the game for Huntley. The Redskins is Tanya Terry. Tanya Jr., 5'10". She'll play the front row. And Mercer the back. Julie Otley to serve. Julie the lefty. Illegal hit song. Well, you might explain what happens on those kinds of things that you're looking for. I think that when you look at it, what happened um, on the serve receive was that Carrie Sluice bent her elbows and just kind of cushioned the ball. strung together here. They lead 4-1. Look at it right off the block, and the middle blocker um, was lined up so that she was kind of facing out of bounds, so Longman just forced the ball to go out. Kind of indecisive on that one, and out of bounds. It was. I'm sure Carrie wishes that she just kind of backed out of the way of that ball. And we've got a timeout. Coach Rita Plasek wants to talk to the Tigresses. She's got a group of six seniors, Bonnie. So they've played together a long time, seen a lot of adversity. They really have. And she talks about the balance on her team and said that she's got an all-senior starting lineup and that they have just clicked from the very beginning. And she said they've been a very tight team. Part of what she's going to want to do right now is just calm them down a little bit, remind them of the fact that they got here together, that they're working together. And that's so important for players to learn is to just be able to settle down, take that deep breath, relax, and play your own game because that's what got you here. And uh, this is a great time for tension, as you <laughs> might imagine. Well, there's been a lot of it here, and we've seen an awful lot of momentum swings with different teams, and both of these teams have been through both the valleys and the hills. As you look at Jim Tishy, he likes what's going on so far. He certainly does, but but you can tell by his expression, he's far from, from out of the worry zone. Julie Otley with a lefty serve. See what happens coming out of the timeout. Cannon step. Picked up. Right over to us. You always 
just like to get the side out of the timeout, but right now, Huntley's got it going. Picked up by Flaherty. Dink to the middle, but picked up nicely. And we're gonna get a net violation, the setter on that attempt. Hit it so we get the side out that Prince has been looking for. Well, this is, this is kind of a, a good luck for them right now because they needed a break any way that they can get it. Well, and they're back to their original rotation, which you always like to have when you're in a tough spot. They're down 6-1. Going over the second hit, they've got Coates now in the front row. Picked up nicely. The Coates again. Oh! Again, she comes in from the outside and her vertical jump helps her and she's up over almost any block that the other team can throw. You see her come way from behind the 10 foot line and that's one thing we've noticed from both Flaherty and Coates on this. They just take huge approaches. Terry with the outside hit, side out. Hotley leads 6-2 as you get a look at Marianne Miller, the captain of the team in the center. Again, this is Rachel Longman coming in to pass the ball, and Princeton just looks very, very different right now than they did this afternoon. They're real tight, and they need to loosen up. They have a very fluid game. Big block, big block on Coach right there. It's for point number eight. That was Green and Terry combined together on that block, and they're pretty awesome. It's like hitting into a brick wall out there. Three ball. Outside. Paul hits the net, and it'll be side out. We're really seeing how what you talked about before, Bonnie, the serve being so important. And, of course, serve reception on by contact. It is. And probably more than what we've seen in the last three or four years in the state tournament is that is that momentum has been established by serving, not so much by hitting or blocking. Call on the boomer. And Sue's unable to dig it out and went out of bounds. So 8-2 Huntley. Reeves serving. She's an excellent server. They look a little bit tense right now, like you mentioned, Bonnie. They do. Shannon Sapp hits the ball much better than that, and you can just tell you know, she got a fairly decent set, and she just hit the ball very softly. Out of bounds, side out. Going for the open corner, we talked to several, all the coaches are talking about placement of serves as well as speed of the serve, that the serves have been much faster this year, and the ability to place it. They really have. We have several. Oh, nice one by Sapp. Blocked by Flaherty. Nice block. Big point there for Princeton. They needed to score, they needed to stop the momentum, and they got a big block to do it. Oh, you can see Flaherty go up again on the replay, and she just was right there and make the ball ricochet down on the court. You were talking about hard serves. Yes, hard serves. And that was unfortunate. But not only hard serves in, but placement. We have several teams down here at the tournament um, that are actually having their serves called from the sideline. Huntley happened to be one of those, and it's actually um, Heather Paul's dad, who is in charge of calling the serves, and he signals in to the server where he wants that ball to go. And Sarah Mercer trying to put it there. It looks effective so far. So far, they got exactly out of it what they'd like to, and they're in the double figures. You see this coming up in the replay. It's a great dive coming up to save the ball. Flaherty couldn't quite get there. Flaherty was going in one direction, the ball was going the other. She was lucky to get a hand on it. But again, I want to just emphasize again about the placement of the serves. Um, the philosophy of calling the serves by area is that somebody on the bench sitting in a very calm position is perhaps in a better position to see what kind of serve receive arrangement you're getting out on the floor. And so they will signal back to the server and then the server can place um, where she wants the ball to go. And the, the couple of teams who are using it, Huntley being one, have used it very, very effectively. And it's kind of like quarterbacking in football. Who calls the play? The quarterback <laughs> or the coach? And Coach Tishy said that it's been a very, very valuable part of his offense, and why change it now? And we can see why. 
Huntley up. 10-3. Coates turns it around side out. And they'll be serving down 3-10 as Nicole Coates goes to the back row. Coates is also an excellent server. She's a tennis player, so this action ought to be normal for her. Tips. She digs it out. Side to Flaherty, who hasn't yet established the power. And there's passing why it's so crucial. Big point. Princeton on again. 4-10. You know, and you mentioned Nicole Coates is a tennis player. In fact, she does play tennis and volleyball at the same time. I think she might be a definite athlete, but... <laughs> a tremendous athlete and her her coach tells us that she plays basketball as well and she runs track in the springtime her yes. mom incidentally is the tennis coach it's her tennis coach oh That's nice right. play. And her dad is her track coach <laughs> it's a family affair All as right. you see that nice dig by tina fourth six ten they're making a run first time they've strung a couple points together since the first two and passing will be crucial here for huntley into the middle go to call and we get a net violation so it didn't matter side up it really didn't matter because we had a defensive switch going on in the backcourt for princeton and it was not fully made by the time the hit came heather call spots it out of bounds and side out i believe that's a first service error for Huntley. I believe it is. Kerry Sluice back. They'd rung up three in a row if they want to keep it together. Free ball. See if Princeton uses it. Goes outside. Black. Oh, what a save. Nicole Coates right there. Into the, out again. Block. But through the block. Julia Vagney with the hit through the block. Right through. See the ball coming off, and it was a beautiful dig, and the ball was dug hard enough to come right back across the net. That is one tremendous effort. Outside to Flaherty, gets one down, it's over. Good net play. Now both teams loosening up, Bonnie. This is the kind of play that we expected, and both teams playing very hard, good defense. by Princeton gives a point to Huntley. They go up 11-6. Ravagni tipped, which does not count as a hit, but unfortunately it also deterred Coates from picking up the ball. Tipped right over her head. It does. You know, it's so valuable to have somebody up there who can block serves because it's such an abrupt way to, to end a server's term of service, but oftentimes they're hard to pick up. In for Shannon Sapp for the Tigresses is Tanya Ewen. Tanya, defensive specialist, does exactly what she's supposed to. Eyeballs it, says, uh-uh, let's take Whoa. it one way. Side up to Princeton. Flaherty serving. Long with the hit. Down through the block. Nice hit by Jamie Green. That's really nice. Tina wasn't quite close enough. See that Tina isn't quite close enough to the net and as her hands deflect the ball, it's just right down between the net and her hands. Shannon Sapp comes back into the game for Princeton as Julie Otley goes back to serve. Julie strung the four points together early in the match, and we get the substitute for Huntley as well. Coming back in, Tanya Terry to play the front row. You might mention that uh, Princeton is playing a 5-1, five hitters and one setter. Setter is Tina Fourth, and she's in the front row right now. And you watch her work. Because she's such, she's such a versatile player, she can hit the ball from that setter's position. But one of the, the nice things that you watch a team do is when she's in the back row, now they have three hitters available with Coates being their primary hitter at this point. And when Tina goes to the front row, she's got two hitters, but she's a versatile enough setter that they are hitting out of three positions. And that's what you call role playing, and that's what they've all been doing so well to get right. this far. 
into the middle to Greve. Out. No touch. So Princeton making another run at it here. 8-12. Tina Forrest. To Terry. Picked up nicely. Over to Coates. Left-handed. Oh, that was a reach. It's the good set, good dig. Greaves buries it. Whoa. See, Greaves come up again, and she just nails the ball. The block never had a chance to set, never formed together. That makes my heart pitter patter. That's so hard to stand there and watch it. And they're so good at awareness. They have such a feel for the court. Rachel Longman for Princeton. Her team down by four, now by three. 9-12. Tigresses coming back one at a time against a very good Huntley team. Both these teams, excellent. It's served by Longman. Illegal hit, rolled up. 10-12 and double figures for the first time is Princeton and this match of even teams is right where we thought it would be. Now, if you, you watch Longman when she's back there serving and you watch her, she's looking at the official and you can just see how intense she is inside of herself. And that's a nice thing to see. They don't have kind of the spacey, worried look that they had at the very beginning. They've settled down to their game. Um, Huntley is playing consistently better. They look very intense. See Rita Plasic. We can do this, right? Remember who you're hitting to. And she has said consistently that she feels that her team is very, very bright. Um, all of the members of her team have 25 plus ACT scores. She <laughs> mentioned that to us. And they're academically very, very sound. It makes such a difference when you coach kids who really understand what you're trying to do. Yes. You can do a lot of more different things. That's right. Well, they talk about critical thinking in the classroom and how important that is, and it certainly is. And boy, it transfers to sports, and it's equally important here. Not to mention problem solving, as right. <laughs> 11 12. We've got a nail biter in this first game, Class A, and out of bounds. We're all tied up. 12 ball. As that timeout did exactly for Coach Rhea Placek that she hoped it would do. She said, Remember who you're hitting to. It's working. Going short this time. Oh! A little think, miscommunication. I think we have a little bit of miscommunication, and it looked that time as if Longman was trying to serve directly at Paul. It was a real short serve, went right at her to, to probably try to, to reemphasize the fact that Paul had hit that last ball long. Bonnie, how important is winning the first game? Um... Well, it's important. Of course, it's important because it establishes what you're doing. Um, but I guess if you were the if you were the team that lost that first game, you try to say, well, it's not so important. We know what they're doing now. Um, we'll settle down into our game. We can come back and get them. Probably the second game is the most important. Certainly, if you've won the first <laughs> game, and if you've lost it, it reestablishes your game and kind of sets the momentum for the third. This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel is strictly prohibited. Rachel Longman like to keep this going. She's got five in a row looking for six. 13-12, up Princeton. Out of bounds, no touch. We've got possible game point as Longman's been on a tear back there serving. Clarity Toxter says, yeah, just one more. Huntley coming out of the timeout. It's a good pass. Inside, a good set. Out of bounds. It's a really nice set. Tanya Terry tried to hit that right back corner. That was the right idea, and she missed it by inches. Watch the game point again going up. 
And Terry coming up over the ball. She's really trying. You see her cut that ball into the right corner and just missed the ball. <laughs> Flaherty gave it a good eyeball. And with Flaherty going, oh, my gosh, thank goodness it was out. That's relief. You betcha. So game one, 15-12 after being down for quite a while. Princeton wins it. We'll be back for game two right after this. chance to come right back at them. They lost the first game 12-15. They also lost their semifinal game in the first game of the three-game match, so they've been here before. No problem. Go to Nico the coach. Good call by Fisher Beth Wambacher. Very good call. We're kind of in a position where you can see that, and no one ever touched that ball. And as you said, Huntley's been here before. By the time you get to the championship match, you should be able to handle this however it's thrown to you. Marianne Miller, the captain, serves. Dug out of the net, net but a football by Princeton. The line used to be four inches. It's now two, but your entire foot has to be over the line for it that's to be right. a fault. And that's the down official's responsibility most of the time. Coach goes cross court. Nice dig. Another one, but nobody else to help. Ooh. Now we've seen Huntley with two quick points scored off of their serving. Their coach told us that their philosophy is to hit and serve as hard as they possibly can. And now that they're into their game, we'll probably see more of that. Tina Ford to serve for Princeton. Outside the call. Oh! Princeton owns the net at the moment as far as good luck's concerned. Well, not only the block, but the hitting as well see this come up on the replay and boom that's Coates on the block in the middle there and ball just goes right down. Miller has to run a long way for that one. Nice block. Recall. Picks an open spot. Oh she's fired up Bonnie. She really is. That was Heather Collins. She comes cross court very tight and tight angle. You see this come up on the replay just cuts the ball nowhere near the block and into the open spot. That's a difficult thing to defense. She is not big, but that back arch rotation. Nice dig by Coates. Oh, what That's defensive play. Save. Somebody's got to dig it. Oh, very Beautiful hit by Coates. She engineered the save to start with, and then she comes back. Here's Coates on the save, and she digs the ball back up so that her teammates can play it. And right now, we're seeing a little bit of hesitant play on the part of Huntley, and that's usually the indication that people are second-guessing themselves, they're not quite too sure, and they're not playing directly together as a team. Well, Rachel Longman has tied us all up at two in game two. You don't have to necessarily hit hard. It's to hit it where the other team isn't. That's right. And we've seen also a lot more of that this tournament. And as we've got some very good hitters like Paul, like Colts, who can get up over the ball and they can hit it hard, but they also can off-speed and place the ball. And when you're sitting back and expecting a hard hit and you get an off-speed hit or a placement shot, it's real difficult to defense. Sarah Mercer into the game to serve for Huntley. Paul goes left-handed. Into the middle for Coates. She just has a powerful approach and a huge jump. And you see her again. Look how high she comes up over the ball. Arm speed's not bad either. Well, she's a, a reacher and a jumper and a fighter. And Shannon Sapp on that serve. Free ball over to them. Outside for Coates. And unable to be picked up, and they score. It's 3-2. You know, and an important point to make here is that we're saying Coates, 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 and she's hitting, but for every time that Coates hits a ball, it has to be dug, it has to be passed, it has to be set. There are defensive players who are playing. This is a total team sport. 
that's as good a comment as we can make about how important everything is. And what coaches really look for is not the hitters, but the passing. That's right. Although you sure have to have the hitters. I don't think they trade them. <laughs> I don't think they give them away. You know, the other thing to mention at this point also is when we were talking with Rita Classic, she said it is so important the substitutes, even though they're not starters, you don't see them out on the floor, but it's the people who are sitting on the bench who have given of themselves unselfishly and said, I'll do whatever is best for the team, who has pushed the girls, the six girls who are out on the floor, day after day after day in practice, and made it tough for them to practice and push them so that they have the kind of play that they have. You know, and it, it, you can't emphasize enough how important, not only for them to push them, but also get along and accept that kind of, well, it's not an easy one to do, and your team unity can be seriously affected if that isn't a pleasant job for those substitutes. And both coaches have emphasized what a great thing it's been for both of them. That's right. There you get a look at the kills, as uh, we're talking about hitting Huntley 15 to eight. And four to two, but you can see it really doesn't make any difference. Huntley had the most kills in the first game, but they didn't win the game, so it's not necessarily hitting. That's exactly right, and everybody gets so excited about the big hitters, but again, it's the whole team. It's everybody working together, not just the flashy stuff. And here's one of those team members that's played an incredible role for Princeton, Shannon Sapp, the 5'5 senior. He's on a string of three points right now. They're leading 5-2, game two, and that timeout does exactly what Coach Jim Tishy wanted it to. Always makes you look like a genius. Doesn't it? Like you kind of whispered in the girl's ear. Heather Call. You see Coach in a defensive role. Out to Ravagni. Ravagni gets one at catch with a grin. Talks to everybody. And you can see what, what happened with Shannon Sapp over here. You could almost see that double hit. In fact, it was almost a triple on her face. <laughs> she grinned about it, too. <laughs> there already a little bit of trouble with that one. So all of a sudden, Huntley's doing what Princeton did in the first game. Just a little bit of time. That, that, I think, is about the only way you catch up in volleyball is one at a time. Well, and when you have two good teams, you're not going to get a big string line. An illegal set call. Right. We're all tied up, five all. Heather Call doing a great job of picking where she wants to serve, making Princeton work. Who found a nice spot there, made it difficult. Coach goes to the back row, dug up beautifully over to Robogny. Out of bounds, side out. Clarity needs to establish herself in the front line with Coach in the back, and Huntley needs to score with Coach back there. That's one way to do it. It's tough with another, another long serve. Uncharacteristic error. Julie Rebagny, 5'9", sophomore. Playing like she's a lot older. Into Flaherty. Nice, nice touch. Outside to Greaves. Diving save by Longman. An illegal set. That's too bad. That was a nice, nice save by Longman. The ball coming again, just a soft. Oh, what a nice touch that was on the ball. Wagner with the serve for the first lead for Huntley. Nice passing. The Miller, the normal setter, and gets one on the outside. So nice little uh, variety of attack here. There is, and she went cross court with it deep into the right side. A good place. And as Huntley goes up seven five. Princeton calls timeout. Now Classic kind of wants to talk with their kids and reestablish the kind of game that they're playing. This game is almost a reversal of the first game. Exactly. Princeton was down, had a little trouble, came back. And now we've got Huntley doing the same thing. See if he can listen to Rita place it. I know, and you look better. Channel 
brings the debate and discussion from the sports pages to your living room when four sports writers defend their columns and opinions on the sports writers on TV. The debate begins Monday evening on Sports Channel. Our season never ends. Once again, this is game two of Class A. Huntley lost the first game, is leading in the second, and Rovagni to serve after the timeout by Princeton. The clarity. Oh, Green with the bomb. That was nice. Rovagni came across the court to dig the ball on the left side and protect her own service. Nice pass. Worth decided to do something different with it. Into the middle, left-handed by Otley. Green couldn't quite get enough rotation on it, set behind her head, and side out. So back to serve, Kerry Sluice, the 5'5 senior, down 5-8. This tight second game battle. the net, picked up by Coates. Tries to go with the fast set. I mean, the ball was just a little bit short. The hitter was a little bit late. Nailed it right into the net. We haven't seen a lot of quick offense. We haven't seen a lot of quick offense through the whole tournament. People seem to be running basics and fundamentals, and with the kind of hitters and setters they have to work with, it's uh, more than... Oh. That's why. It makes it look good. And, and it's just what we talked about with your play success. Keep it simple. Do it well. That's right. And here we see it coming up again on the replay. Just right oh. over the block. And again, you can't emphasize enough how much the vertical jump helps. Because you saw Grieve there go way up over the block, and then she was able to nail the ball down. Up 8-6, Tanya Terry back in for Huntley. Replaces Sarah Mercer. Clarity in the tip in the middle. Outside and put down by Clarity on the single block out of the middle. Nice block. She was just really kind of hunting up there. And you can see her again. She's moving. Watch her move. And boom, she's up there with the ball in her hands. And she goes back to serve. Oh, nice, nice serve. serve. Unfortunately, she slid under the line before she could do that. It was, but it was a great attempt at a save. And Princeton coming back, down by one, seven to eight. Clary doing a great job of serving. She's got it all tied up. We're knotted at eight apiece. Now we saw her in the, out on the court, Grieve coming over to Otley and just saw her calm down, calm down. It's nice and easy with the ball. Side out. Back to our original beginning game rotation. Marianne Miller, the captain of the Huntley Redskins, back to serve. Nice block. Nice block. Oh! Paul with a good idea, just a little bit short. See the block coming up again, double block right there, contact on the outside, and it's on the floor. Tina Forth to serve. Nice try by Clarity, but Paul establishing from the outside. Side out to Greve. Jamie Greve, the 5'9 senior. The entire starting team of Princeton is seniors. A little more variety in Huntley. Oh, nice serve. Uh, we had, I think we had a mix up on serve receive there. Rachel Longman kind of stepped aside and let the ball go into the backcourt rather than opening. Jamie Grieve is one of Huntley's best servers and they really need some points right in this part of the game. She is exemplifying her coach's philosophy. And he said they served a lot and they did hitting approaches a lot day after day after day after day. Hard and fast, hard and fast. 10-8 Huntley. A 
again, the hard hit bounces off the net, falls in an open spot for Princeton. And, you know, we would point out to our young viewers, those kids who are in grade school and in junior high school, what both coaches have emphasized, and that is good fundamental play done over and over and over again so that execution is flawless. It's nice to do really fancy things, and it's nice to do short sets, and it's nice to be able to do jump serves. But before you do any of those things, you have got to be able to control the fundamentals. So if that's one word we get across to our young players, learn the fundamentals and execute them well. Sarah Mercer back to serve for Tanya Terry. You know, you said there were a lot of parallels between the first game and the second game, Huntley and Princeton. We now have Princeton looking like they're kind of miscommunicating on the court a little bit. Oh, big block by Otley at one-on-one -on -one with the cold coat. That's got to be a spirit lifter. Otley was right there. You see it on replay. Otley watches her. There's no fooling. She is up and waiting. The fundamentals, Bonnie. Absolutely the fundamentals. She had such a huge jump there, and Otley, it looked as if she was just hanging. She'd reached the peak, and she was almost on her way down about the time Coates contacted the ball. Beautiful time. But out. the hands forward. So huge the, hands. So, so it went down on the other side. When right. uh, Coach Plasek wants time out. There you see Otley right there talking to Coach James Tisch. You're going, I do it all the time, Coach. Right. I can do that. You see the, the blocking stats there in the second game. Princeton's had three. Huntley's had one. Blocking has become a tremendous factor in girls and women's volleyball. 12-8 Huntley. Game two. They lost the first game. Same thing they did in the semifinal. Princeton's also gone three games in this tournament. So they're used to the long ones. And it's a lot of fun for us to view it this way. We get to see more of them with that happens. You bet. And also we get to see, and this is the way a championship should be. Sarah Mercer would like to make sure it goes three as she serves for Huntley. Middle of the coach, off the block. I got my... Down. And that was close, just with a control hit. Again, nice high jump. But it was an off-speed hit, wasn't hard. And the defense was set for something else. Shannon Sapp, picked up by call. Called illegal. Point for Princeton. 9-12, trying to come back and ended at two games. Nice serve. Nice serve. Outside, Dink. Coverage defensively. Coach. Again, Coach with a nice soft shot. Nice soft shot. She was up, looked over the block, there was a hole in the middle, and she just kind of punched the ball into it. Timeout, Huntley. Rita Plasek, when asked, when did you think you could be in the championship game? Said right at the very beginning of the season. And that <laughs> they had known it for a long time. You see that... Um, Nicole Coates, nice soft shot again, which caused this timeout that we're sitting through. And she just has a tremendous amount of control. It's so much fun to see both of these teams. They have so, they're all excellent players. They've served roles for their teams. They've been together for a long time. When you think of the countless minutes and hours these kids have put in together over so many years, some of them since seventh grade. Great. And it all culminates in this. They're all winners in some fashion. Yes, they are. Shannon Sapp would like to keep this going. James Tishy hopes the timeout does stop the momentum, and it does. It does. We have an out-of-bounds serve. It's amazing how many <laughs> times that happens. Heather Call goes back to serve for Huntley. They're up. 12-10. Long way to go. Mercer can't quite get there. Side up. Coates is just attacking the middle over and over and over again right into the middle of the middle is where she's placing the balls and the last three balls she's put down for kills it's been real effective Rebecca. 
Flaherty, oh! oh. Again, and Flaherty, that is just, that's an off-speed hit. It's just a real soft topspin hit. You see it coming up in the replay. She's underneath the ball, bang, she puts it up. We have three players moving in for the ball and then stop. Otley with a left-handed hit. The Flaherty in the middle, off the block. Net violation by Princeton. You see it in the fourth go. Oh, I didn't mean it. Uh -huh. Trying to get out of there for everybody's side. Side out. Been a long time since Huntley scored. They've gone through an entire rotation as Julia Bagney tries to clean that up and does. We get a collision on Princeton. Sure didn't we have. Point was scored, everybody's okay. That's great. Terry Smoose is getting up a little bit slowly. Smiling though, I always like that. That's true because we've had a couple of injuries down here before we got to the finals and certainly don't want to see any more. No, we haven't had many, but it has been, it's been at least four. Shoulder, knee, an ankle. Side out. Get one at a time, it gets you closer, but it's giving Princeton a little bit of life here. As they go back, it's Carrie Sluice, one of the people in the collision. Reeve. Everybody's looking to see who's going to hit it. Longman. Nice play. Side to Longman. Off the block. It was nice by Longman. Again, she hit into the block, but it was a soft block. Hit into it. Ricocheted off the hands and out to the side. 12-13, Princeton coming back, tough pass, thinks again, Longman at the net with a good net play, ties it all up. It's right there, she patrols the net like a cat looking for food. I mean, she's just incredible. She watches where the ball goes and she's right on it. 13 all. Princeton won the first game. Wants it in two. Green says, not yet. No. We want to get yeah. that ball. I'll have it there. Otley goes back to serve and ends for the Redskins. Comes back in as Tanya Terry, the 5'10 junior, plays the front row. Sarah Mercer, the big play back row player, goes out. They're pointing out the spots to serve to. Otley to serve. Otley needs a point. 14's a lot different than 13, and they've got it. 14, 13. Grief put that ball down with a vengeance. You see her come at it, and boy, arm swing was fast, and she hit that hard. They don't want to give it back to Princeton. Rather take it right now. It's not make it any longer. Back set to Flaherty. Oh, but off the block, unable to be picked up. Side out. Flaherty. And Flaherty will go back to serve after that nice play. Down 13-14. Outside to Terry, dug by Coates. She's everywhere. Yes, she is. But Grieve off the block. Grieve playing very well at crucial times right now on that outside hitting position. She Set just up. doesn't want to let the ball go. Captain Miller would like to serve this one right into game three. Tip, Doug, up. Good call. Terry had her arms separate when she did it as she looked down, and that was a tough call, a tough play, but side out. Green had a nice pickup off the floor on that one. Miller, the call, low. Into the net. We're all tied up at 14-14, and now both teams have an additional timeout. And they're going to use it. Coach Dave Tishney says, I want mine now. Get two times out with the regular part of the game, and once it ties up at 14-14, you have an additional timeout. Even if you haven't taken any times out, then you could have three, or two left, or whatever. But it's a... Uh, it's nice because once you get tied at 14-14 and you know in volleyball you have to win by two, 
it's nice to be able to uh, have that extra time to talk to your team. What's the most important thing coming at serve receive as uh, Huntley comes back on the floor? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Going to want to be able to establish some control. James Tishy's been a great picker of timeout spots so far in this game. Yes, he event. has. Back to serve, Tina Forth, the 5'7 senior. All tied up, 14 all game two. Princeton won the first game. They want to end it in two. Miller to call. Not quite what they had in mind, I don't think. I don't think so. Coats off the block. There's one of the two they need. 15-14 Princeton, and they're one point away from a possible state championship that they dreamed about on day one of practice. Day one. You see Rachel Long when she's out there. Hold on, guys. Calm down, calm down. Out to call. Picked up by Coates. Back to her. And there's Paul, the two of them going at it. Tipped. Great volleyball. And there it is. Coates up over the block, puts it down the line in the middle of the court. 16-14, Princeton. Now, Princeton. Half state champions. 15-12 and 16-14. And the champions, like they've been all season, together. Yes, they are. Now you see the kids coming off the bench. Everybody did this, and their coach will be the first to say so. There are 15 players and two coaches out there doing what they've done all year together. The 1990 Class A champions, the Princeton Tigresses. And we'll be back with the awards right after this. say as president. At this time, please meet the Redskins of Huntley, who finished the 1990 season in second place with a final record of 38 wins, three losses, and one tie. First, meet the principal of Huntley High School, Jean Gagline. Head coach, James Tishy. Assistant coach, Larry Call. Heather's father. Number one, Becky Got to be Chappell. a pretty proud father at this moment. Number two, Brandy Fox. Number three, Jill Hebe. Number four, Pam Nuremberger. Number five, Penny Pisky. Number six, Stacy Fritz. Number seven, Sarah Mercer. Number eight, Tara Shamhart. Number nine, Julie Ravagni. Number 10, Mary Ann Miller. The setter. Number 11, Heather Call. Certainly a versatile player. Number 12, Jamie Freed. Had some key hits. She sure did. Number 13, Liz McLaughlin. Number 14, Julie Otley. Had some great blocking ability. And number 15, Tanya Terry. The youngster in the front. Manager Bobby Parks. Manager Jackie Greeby. And scorekeeper Mrs. Larry Call. That's a family fair. That's three calls. Yes, it is. Presenting medallions to the squad member of the first place team will be Mr. Edward Roberts of Oak Forest High School in Oak Forest, who serves the IHSA as a member of the Board of Directors, and Mr. Lorne Stevens of Winona High School in Winona, who serves the IHSA also as a member of the Board of Directors. At this time, please meet the Tigresses of Princeton, who finished the 1990 season in first place with a final record of 36 wins, two losses, and one tie. First, meet the principal of Princeton High School, Stephen Matthews. 
Head coach, Rita Classic. Ben Dias, you twice. coach, Kay Pearson. It's a pretty exciting Assistant record. coach, Eric Tinley. Number one, Kim Norell. Number two, Marnie Swanson. Important kids here. Number three, Nicole Coates. She did it all. Number four, Stephanie Wint. Number five, Marla Wood. Number six, Ann Gillespie. Number seven, Tanya Gouin. Number eight, Karen Flaherty. Number nine, Carrie Sluice. Those are happy tears. Number 10, they are Sasha happy tears. Esme. Number 11, Shannon. At Sapp. this point, you've got to be emotionally blitzed and so Number 12, happy. Michelle Goodwin. Number 14, Jennifer Siegerstrom. Number 15, Rachel Longman. What a role player. Number 16, Tina Forth. The setter and statistician, Missy Miley. You know what, Ann, on both teams, most of these girls will go on to play other sports and have distinguished the themselves place by appearing at state Leroy tournaments in track and field, High School tennis, in Carterville, who uh, and as softball. Vice President. So it's an over. <laughs> and the captains of Huntley High School, please step forward to receive the second place trophy. The well-deserved second place, the runners-up trophy, Class A in Illinois, an incredible achievement to Huntley. Their first trip down, the first they, they make it to the championship game. It's Missy wonderful. It's hard to finish your season on a loss, but I'll tell you, there are 400-plus other schools that would love to be there. Coach Rita Plastic and the captains of Princeton High School, please step forward to receive the championship trophy. And that is a class act from beginning to end. And they do it just like they always have. All of them received the championship trophy because they've all done it together. The champions, Class A, 1990, the Tigresses of Princeton. Now here's Bonnie Beach with head coach Rita Plasek. Rita, it's really nice to be with you this evening. I had a feeling when we talked to you this afternoon that you were going to be in this spot. Is it? Did it go how you thought it was going to go for you? Well, not exactly. In that first game that uh, we came out, we were very behind. Uh, I think it was six to one. So I really didn't think that we'd be in the hole. What do you know? Do you have any idea what happened to you there? It's kind of atypical from what we had seen right. with your team. Right. Um, I think this team has been very focused all the way through the tournament, and I really think at the beginning of that first game, we just lost our concentration, and we weren't concentrating where we wanted to send that ball to, and that caused some problems for us. Well, you have talked all along about how close and how tight your team was. Was that real helpful in terms of bringing them back online and getting them in focus? Right. Uh, I called that first time out, and I said, you know, we are looking at the other person, and that is taking away just that fraction of a second, are hitting the ball. So I said, we know that we're going to be in our right positions. You just go ahead and run through, take the ball. And then we started playing much better. Yes, you did. It looked like after the first time out, they really settled down and, and they got back on track. And then in game number two, it almost looked as if we were going to have a reverse, that Huntley kind of started taking your team apart and they got out of their game again. Did you have that sense? or? Oh, yes. Um, I was really worried in that second game. In fact, I wanted to call timeout, and I thought I better make sure that I had some timeouts. I didn't. So, yeah, we were struggling in that second match. What, what brought the girls back on track there? Do you think, it just looked like a couple of them got very determined and thought, you know, this is a state championship, we need this. Right, and, and I think our serves got much better towards the stretch. We knew that in order to beat Huntley, we felt like we had to put our serves out on the lines, make the two-man receive, move out to get it. And I think we did a pretty good job of that, and their passes weren't as um, accurate to the setter, and so they weren't able to get the good setups. Well, it was just a beautiful, beautiful effort by your whole team, and they were in and out of focus, but they were really there when it counted, and we want to congratulate you. you. And now back to Ann Penstone and the AA Championship. Thanks, Bonnie. And we also want to mention that Colchester beat Mendota in third place action, 16-14, 10-15, 15-3. And coming up, we've got Class AA action. <laughs> 